Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh! Welcome back to the Jenny McCarthy Show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. Uh, I'm so excited she's back in studio. She's been on my show before. Victoria Gotti, she's promoting a new TV movie. And you know this is right up our alley, everybody. This is the stuff that we love watching on Lifetime. Victoria Gotti's My Father's Daughter. It premieres Saturday at 8 p.m. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Jenny. How are you? Good, my love. How are you? You're gorgeous. Uh, thank you. So do you, as always. Oh, please. Um, congratulations on getting this your story told. I know you wanted to do this Lifetime Project to dispel a lot of misconceptions about yourself, your family. Um, what is the biggest mis- misconception you think that people have? I think that, you know... Um, being in the public eye constantly and then reading all the headlines and you you can't comment you know I, I learned early on you just can't comment to all of them so you stop you just stop and you let them write whatever they want and it as hurtful as it could be when you have kids especially boys as you know I mean yeah. you it it becomes like such an affront that you feel like you have to defend yourself because it's like this you know mom's honor you know to the boys But I waited and I waited and I waited and I think this finally tells the story of everything that everybody's read, believed, and has had no clue, no concept. I think this basically lays it out and tells it the way it is. I was going to say, because you said, you know, for the sake of my sons who are now grown men, you know, it was time they actually saw and absorbed what your life was. What was your son's reaction when they watched the film? I, they actually haven't seen the film, but I they let haven't. them read the script. No, I wrote the script and I let them read, each of them read it. I left a copy out on the cocktail table and just left it there for weeks. And each came in at their own time, picked it up, and they read it. And I, one of my sons, he was funny. He just looked at me and said, you know, Mom. He said, uh, my ex-husband is remarried. So he said, you know, Mom. He said, Daddy's going to really love this. He goes, he better be prepared to have his... Uh, suitcases out on the on the front lawn he said you know when this and I said well listen it is what it is you know and my son said hey I'm with you you know so you gotta if you're gonna tell the story you gotta tell the story right the true story um what was the most surprising thing that you kind of learned about your dad who you didn't know very well growing up uh but you know doing the research and listening to stories what shocked you the most I think what shocked me the most I don't think anything really shocked me the most I'm being honest I think that it was as I was telling someone earlier the most um I think that we really I figured out really what my father was all about what that whole life was all about it wasn't until my late teens you would see things you would you would watch the way people would react around him I would hear things but I never quite knew but I think when I started to read the papers and then I, my wedding day, I mean, that was it, the dead, dead, dead giveaway. I mean, I got married and I came outside. The whole, na- the whole town was out there. Wow. And I thought, wh- why? And they, everybody was, you know, just lining the streets and it was like this big to-do. And then I walk into this reception with thousands of people that I don't know, I've never met. And I think, there's something up here, you know. So, I mean, you figure it out. You just kind of figure it out. And it goes from just um, one of those guys, so to speak, to knowing that he's larger than life. You know, in that realm, in that world, this is a big this is a big thing. This has to be so fascinating through your eyes. I can only imagine. That's why I'm so excited to watch it. Um, Which part do you feel like you wanted to set the record straight the most? Um, With, I think with, there was, I always say to people, well, they say when you when you were writing it, how you know how hard, how easy. The hardest part were three parts. There were just three, like, in other words, events. It went in that order. My brother's death, my daughter's death, my father's death. And I think what I wanted everybody to know was the realness behind each of it. Mm. Not what they've read, not what they've heard, not what they've assumed, but to live it and know that I wrote this. So this is what actually happened. This isn't something that somebody's guessing or a journalist maybe put together or this is what happened. This is how it happened. So read it and there it is. I think that's what I really wanted them to know. It's not just based on a true story. It is a true story. 
coming yes. from the person herself. I mean, I obviously we could all uh, understand what it feels like to bury a parent, but to bury a child, I don't ever, I can't. I mean, I've come close with my own son and um, I still have post-traumatic stress. Yeah. I still burst yeah. into tears every once in a while. Like, oh, you will. You do. You know, I d- you do. And it's, uh, how do you overcome something that to me is the most difficult thing you can experience in your lifetime? You know, I I think of it, it's so strange because it's the weirdest thing. When my daughter was born, and she was still born, May 2nd, if not for that, it's really weird, Jenny, but it's like every May 2nd, I start about the end of the month before, and then I go into it like till the 4th or the 5th, but then I sit and I think, and I go, well, you know what? If not for that, I would not have my oldest son. So it's kind of really strange for me. It's so bizarre, but in my own head, in our own worlds, we imagine we have them all, you know. Mm-hmm. And like the the boys are always asking me, you know, well, what would a sister have been like, or you know, what do you think Justine, you know, would have? How do you? How, would she have looked like you? Would she have looked like Daddy? And I'd say to them, joking around, no, she'd look like you, you know. So <laughs> it's um. You just, you deal. You, you you have a choice. You can lay down, like my father used to say, and, you know, just roll up into a ball, or you can bounce. And I bounce a lot. <laughs> you bounce, you persevered, and you have other children to live for. Yes, yes. Um, how much input did you have in the whole thing? Did Lifetime say, you know what, we just need to kind of take that part out or do this, and or did you have full authority? Interestingly, I had full, I wrote the whole script. And um, I didn't the first time around, but then I did the, the rewrite and everything. But then a lot of even my parts were cut out. When I got into the, to the production room and I was like, wait, when I saw the <laughs> script on the, on the bed of the suite and I went, what happened to, and I went through and then, you know, of course I, I called one of the uh, other exec producers and they said, well, that's only because, you know, budgets and time-wise and, and all these constraints. And I went, oh, okay. I didn't agree with all of them. But, right. you know, they have to make decisions. So they're professional decisions, and I got it. Exactly. So you were okay with them doing what the yeah. professionals said you need to do. I'm talking to Victoria Gotti. She's got a, a movie that's coming out this Saturday at 8 p.m. on Lifetime called Victoria Gotti, My Father's Daughter. Um, she wrote it herself, as you can tell. It's the revealing story that she's been wanting to, to um, kind of put out there. Factual. She wrote it herself. Um, you know, there was that movie uh, that uh, John Travolta did. Did you? What did you think of it? I, you know, I ha- everybody asked me about that. I had nothing to do with it, nothing to do with the writing. I, I didn't see it. I didn't read the script, nothing until it literally at the premiere. And uh, I remember John Travolta coming up to me the night before because he had been in town for the week, and he asked me, well, what would you think of it? And I said, Johnny, I wish I could tell you. They had come to my home, and I said to him, I wish I could tell you. To him and his wife, I said, I haven't even seen it. I haven't read anything. I haven't seen it. I have no clue. So he looked at me like, you know, he said, you haven't seen I said, no, I haven't. I'll see it for the first time Thursday, I said, at the premiere. And he found that so strange. But then Thursday, he came right up to me after the premiere, and he said, what would you think? And I said to him, it was very interesting. I said, it's amazing how we each, I guess, perceive our own upbringings when we're in the same house, and we, we just perceive it differently. Totally. You know? And I think the older one, or the old, in pecking order, because I'm not the oldest, but I think that it kind of goes like that. But we all see things differently and how we perceive them. Different lenses. I have um, I have three sisters, and I've written eleven books. Yeah. And there's always my childhood is in it somewhere. My sisters will call me and be like, "Whose house were you in? No, Whose house truth. were you raised in?" And I and I and I, and that's when I started to realize, oh my god, we all have different lenses of how we perceive our yep. upbringing. I had to fight it's, with my sister last night over that. She said she said something to me. We were talking about growing up, same thing like you just said, and there was one situation with my mother, and she said something to me, and I said, where was I when this happened? You know, and she said, oh, stop, you were right there. And you remember, I said, no, I honestly don't. And then when we figured it out, I said to her, Ange, wait, I was like five and a half right? to your, like, nine? I said, are you kidding? 
<laughs> so that's where I was. Exactly. It's, it's that's why it's like you have to be somewhat sympathetic, empathetic to you yes. know your siblings over yes. that. Just last note on John Travolta. Did you think he did a good job? I thought he did a very good job, and I think the movie, given w- the stripes that it 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 had hit, I mean, they hit so many obstacles, so many, wow. Uh, I think that even in the end, not having the producer even present, you know, uh, the guy that had, had started the whole realm of it, but when you got guys on board like Nick Cassavetes, uh, Barry Levinson, and you let them go, wow, you know, something's up. That's like, that's not a good creative decision. Not good. But I think he did great with what he had. I I, I really do. I think he did a good job of what he had. But if to this day somebody asks me, and they they have, they said, you know, I liked what Maurice did in my movie. I like the way he portrayed my father. I think that realistically it's believable. It's the way I could see it. Every time I, I watch him in certain roles, I can see it. I see that wow. happening over again. So that's why it's it's just it's hard. It, my father was a very complex man, and it was very hard to see somebody else in that role. I bet that would be difficult. It would be hard to see myself, someone else playing me. Exactly. Exactly. How was that for you? I didn't. You know, I couldn't even pick Chelsea. I was the only one, the last holdout, and. Everybody was on the phone, a lot of the heads, and they finally said, well, we feel, you know, children, and I just stopped for a minute. Uh, I was making my youngest son something to eat, and I just stopped, and I went, you know what, guys, you're right. I'm going to go with strength in numbers and blah, 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 majority rules. Let's go for it. And then I was not sorry. I wasn't sorry. But it was weird. You're right, Jenny. It was so weird for me to say, yeah, she's perfect. You know, let's 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 choose her. I right. couldn't do it. I, I just couldn't do it. I saw so many tapes, so many actresses, reels, and spoke to so many people. I could not do it and say, yeah, she'd make a good me. I couldn't right. do it. I think it's almost impossible, to be honest. I mean, you almost have to trust other people. And you're and exactly. think about this. If, if, our, if our siblings have different perceptions of their childhood, imagine what other people have perceptions of you right you know right. I mean god forbid I let America cast me <laughs> no I think they, they do I think they do well I could do well casting you oh that's very sweet thank you um so I want to plug the movie again Victoria Gotti's movie uh Victoria Gotti my father's daughter you guys don't forget it premieres Saturday at 8 p.m were you ever worried growing up like um for your life for your oh yeah boyf- you were, right? Oh, yeah. You had to For be. my life, no, because my father had this way of always making you feel so protected. It was like, even if you thought, I have to say, like, aside from that, even that life, you never thought that anything bad would ever happen inside the home. You know, it was you always felt, I remember always feeling so safe, especially when he was home, when he was there. Mm. So safe. And then when he died, like a lot of people ask me, I was, he was probably the close, I was probably the closest person in my life, I think, to him and vice versa. In my life, I think he was, he was my, my person. And they asked me, well, when he died, what was your first reaction? And I remember feeling scared, just scared and not having that protectiveness Mm. around me anymore. And even though he was away at that time, I could go somewhere and I could see him and I could right. talk to him and he had this way of just wow making everything just right again and it How was old right were you when rain. he passed again it was only about it was 12 years ago so I wasn't that you know young I wasn't that old I was at that age where I just got divorced and I needed him I really you needed did. him and my kids needed him so it was hard yeah. I mean, that's when the rugs pulled out from underneath you, especially when you yeah, get divorced. Yeah. And and your parents, you know, they, they do always make you feel that kind of safety net. Yes. And yes. it's very scary. That's why a lot of, you know, of us talk about when our parents start to kind of maybe lose it a little bit. You're like, no, right. you're my foundation. you got to stay with me. We, we never want to. We, we don't even want to think that. We don't. No, but not But unfortunately, it's just evolution. You know, it's evolution. We're I all know. growing. We're evolving circle of life um how are the boys doing how are they doing the boys are doing great they're just i'm a grandma i'm a grandma congratulations i have a two-year-old grandson that is the love of my life he is just i mean i have to say he is just incredible 
um, watching him, this little mini me of my son. It's just amazing that he just is so adorable. And How do you I could ex- have... How do you yeah. explain that? That feeling that so many... You can't of, explain it. You can't. The, the grandmother feeling. You can't. I can't. My father used to say, you know, you love your children and I love you guys, but there's something about the grandkids and there's a certain kind of a love. I can't explain it to you. You'll know wow. one day. And that wow. day came and I have to tell you, this little guy, I, when he cuddled up to me for the first time, oh. but like knowingly... Do, when he did that right. knowingly and he cuddled up to me and I was babysitting for him and he got up into my lap and he cuddled in and he put the book out in front of us and you could see he was just about to fall out and he just kind of nuzzled into me I just melted I couldn't oh. move I wouldn't move <laughs> for like two hours I would not move I, I just oh, stood there I just, like, get that that's actually a really good explanation oh, of how God. I just keep buying dogs so I can get that feeling right now um Victoria Gotti I love talking to you you're always keep it real and I, I really appreciate that and you Thank being you. so honest love about being your here. life and sharing it with us Victoria Gotti my father's daughter you guys make sure you check it out it premieres Saturday 8 p.m on Lifetime thank you so much again and come back anytime you had a friend of me thank you sweetie Bye, you were the best. Bye bye. Bye bye, sweetie. We'll be right back, guys. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!